Okay. Welcome back. Oh man. Looked like I was sitting here for a long time. Didn't know I was live. Sorry about that. Welcome back. Welcome back. Just wanted to share uh, some information. Hopefully help. You know, that's my whole goal here on this channel is to help the general public. This is a community service for me. It makes me feel better. You know, it, it makes me feel like I have purpose. You know, like I'm doing something for the good of society, my country, my culture. And I want to help out on this uh, video the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Okay. I've invited them to this live stream. I don't know if they will join or not. Hopefully they do, and hopefully they uh, consider what I'm about to share with you all here. So, first of all, a uh, big shout out to everybody who's able to join me this live stream, Ban All Dogs, La La Kitten, Kittens, Ban All Dogs in the building, Luis Ferreira in the building, Karen, let's get into it. Uh, I was doing some surfing. I, I searched the internet, do my research. I do homework every day, every single day. I'm researching something. And I stumbled across some misinformation from the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Now, yes, the reason I'm going to make a whole video dedicated to this misinformation is because of how prominent Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh is. Okay. Uh, on their website, you can see they say this, quote, it's an honor to be ranked again as one of the best pediatric hospitals in the country. Okay, in the country. Right here on their website, UPMC Children's again ranked as one of the best pediatric hospitals in the United States. So, when people come to a website like this, they expect the information to be accurate. You should not have misinformation on your website. Now, I want everybody who follows this channel to understand something. We are all experts. You following me on these videos, many of you have been following me for years. Um, I remember Ashley, I first saw her years ago on this channel, before she even started making videos. And what in the world is going on? I heard she her services, something is going on. Look, I don't want any of the content creators to fall off or, or, or have any kind of trouble. All right, we got to pump this information out here. Uh, Nikola Tesla, several people have been following me for years. I want y'all to understand, you all are experts. You've gone to school for years. You've been doing research for years. You don't need an actual university to give you a title. You are an expert. Uh, historian professor John Henry Clark. Some of you may have heard of him. He was a university professor. And he obtained his status without ever attending college. He simply researched hundreds of books, material. And the university said, well, you are just as educated as a bona fide historian who'd gone to school to be a historian. It's all a matter of educating yourself. Here on this channel, we've been educating ourselves. 
we are in a position to correct any and all institutions putting out information on dog attacks because that's what we specialize in. We specialize in this. Okay, so anybody from the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh who may be listening, I would not take people like us lightly. On their website, they have a section on dog bites and it contains misinformation and it is right here it says quote there are 2,400 dog attacks every day 100 each hour or one every 36 seconds that is false That is false. And that is a huge mistake. You don't want to get information like this wrong. If you want to tell the general public how many dog attacks happen on a daily basis in the United States, you better get that number right. If you don't, that is very irresponsible, unprofessional, more than anything, unprofessional. Now, let me see if y'all can see this. Let me see, actually, can I share? Yeah, I can share my calculator. How about that? How about that, people? <laughs> they said there's 24,000, excuse me, 2,400 dog attacks every day. Now, multiply that by 365 days. That's 800,076. Excuse me, 876,000. Do y'all know what that figure actually is? How many of you know what this number really represents? Can y'all believe that? They have this on their website. This, 876,000, that's the number of people who need emergency care treatment for a dog attack every year. I mean, they are way off. They're way off. And yet, it's sitting right there on their website, just as plain as day, just as plain as the sun is shining. Now, there are about 4 million, 4.7 million dog bites every year. Divide that by 365 days. You get 12,876 dog attacks every day. Divide that by 24 hours. You're talking about 536 dog attacks every hour. You know, when you're dealing with dog bite, dog attack, because a bite is an attack. When you deal with dog attack statistics, you have to get it right. There's no room for error like this, again, on their website. They said there are 2,400 dog attacks every day. That is false. And that is a huge mistake. There are 2,400 people 
who need emergency care treatment every day. But every day, and this is only the reported cases, every day there is nearly 13,000 dog attacks in this country alone. Okay, children's, if you're this prominent, here, let me go back to my PowerPoint here. Okay, and I'm not trying to make mockery or, because I want them to correct this. I want to see them put the actual figures up there. If you want to inform the public of how many dog attacks there are every day, give them the correct numbers. Because I don't think this was a mistake. I could be wrong. But I have a hard time believing that this was a mathematical error. I, I, I sort of believe that this was deliberate. In order to conceal the actual number of people who are attacked every day in the United States. Why would they do that? Because the number is staggering. It's jaw-dropping. Nearly 13,000 people bitten every day. Five to six hundred people every hour. In other words, it's non-stop. People are being attacked non -stop. Stop. Here, let's go deeper than that. Let's go deeper than that. This is in a day. Divide that by 24 hours. 536 per hour. And let's divide that by 60. So you're talking about eight dog attacks every second. Are we not? Did I make a mistake here? A math mistake? We're talking about eight people attacked every second. And I think this is why it's possible that this was not a mistake, that it was deliberate to conceal the actual figures because the real figures are jaw-dropping. So anybody from Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, I don't have a big audience here on YouTube. Maybe you won't care that a uh, citizen, YouTuber, has revealed some misinformation on your website. Maybe you won't care. But I hope you change that. Now, I have my doubts whether or not they will. You judge for yourself. So, because they made an error starting out, everything they wrote after this is bogus information. Except for this. They said that more than 50% of all dog bite, dog bite victims are children. That's accurate. That's accurate. But I sent them this message on Twitter, and I explained to them uh, what the problem is. So I've used two different media outlets to reach out to them because I want them to change this information. This is not a gotcha moment. I want to see the real statistics made public by prominent medical establishment. I don't, I don't want to see the actual figures only being put out by channels like mine. These hole-in-the-wall websites and blogs. No, you put the actual figures on your website. Can you at least do that? So I explained it to them, I reached out to them, and I'm going to keep an eye on the website, see if they change it. But I 
ran into something else on their website that disappointed me. And my hopes are low after reading this. There's a section on their website about how to prevent dog attacks. Here you see, why does a dog bite and how do you avoid it? They say dogs will bite people for many different reasons. Sometimes we make a mistake and do something that frightens or angers the dog. Now, you, you already know, as I read this, I just shook my head. I said, here we go. Here we go. I could predict the rest of the article after reading that sentence. The first thing they want to talk about is the children's behavior. Keep in mind, people, they're not talking about adults. This is a children's hospital. They're talking about how children can avoid being attacked. And they start out in this tradition that they always and only point towards the child's behavior. And we haven't seen, we have not seen any video at all where a child provoked a dog. They always run out of nowhere, dart from a distance, attack immediate for no reason. They are never provoked. And that's based on actual footage. They say other times the dog may be upset or reacting to something that has nothing to do with the victim who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Again, taking blame off the dog. Talking about the dog is just reacting to something. No, dogs attack to establish dominance. It gives them a high when they mutilate a living organism. They get off on it. They bully and fight and attack to establish dominance because they are animals, predators. Let's stop playing dumb here. Of course, they never point that out when they want to talk about why dogs attack. They never talk about dominance, especially when they deal with children. The more they deal with children, the less likely they are to point out that dogs attack simply to establish dominance. Dogs focus on attacking weak targets, harmless targets. That's why they usually attack kids and babies. These are cowardly, Vicious, evil creatures. It's really as simple as that. This article uh, on their website continue. They say in a small number of cases, the dog may be ill. Here we go. Once again, trying to take the blame off the dog. Oh, it was just sick. We don't attack people when we get sick. Attacking people is the last thing we want to do. Typically, when humans are sick, we become more friendly. We're in pain. Pain can humble you. It can calm you down and make you appreciate life. But this is supposed to be an acceptable reason to launch an attack. On a child, of all people, it says typically the victim did not do anything directly to provoke the attack. Okay. This section on their website continues. And they wrote this. Common sense tells us that avoiding certain circumstances, the people, this is on a children's hospital website. They're talking about children. But we've seen this 
plenty of times. This is no surprise to us. They say common sense tells us that avoiding certain circumstances will reduce the chances of you being attacked by a dog. While it would be impossible to list every situation or behavior to avoid, the following are some examples of things you should never do around a dog. Hit, kick, or beat a dog. People, this is on a children's hospital website. They are giving advice on how kids can avoid being attacked. Tease a dog. Okay? Growl or threaten a dog. People, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? Who growls? What child growls at a dog and threatens a dog? I've never seen a child tease a dog. Wave your hands or feet in the dog's face. Place your face near the dog's mouth. What do you dog lovers do that all the time? They're always putting their face in the dog's face. And what do you mean near the dog's mouth? The dog's mouth is in front. But this doesn't even make sense. Corner the dog. Cover the dog with a blanket. They're saying you should never do these things. Okay, so why do you have image after image all over the internet of people in their dog's face kissing dogs, kids hugging dogs, in their faces right by the dog's face? Pull on its ears. People, they are saying that this is what kids do to provoke an attack. Or else they wouldn't be listing these things as something that you should not do. Pull on its ears, pull on its leg, or pull on its tail, or otherwise hurt the dog. Never try to pet a strange dog, no matter how cute it looks. Okay, This is where my hopes that they'll change that information plummeted. It plummeted. Wait a minute, can y'all see this? Okay, sorry about that. All of these things are easy to understand. Once you think about how to act around a dog, common sense will usually guide your actions. However, there are other things that can prevent dog attacks that are not quite so obvious. The most important of these lessons is how you approach a dog. Everything is pointing towards the child's behavior, suggesting that the dog does nothing and that these attacks occur because the dog is reacting to mistreatment reacting to misbehavior, being violated. When dogs are the only ones that do the violating. Children's hospital. Look at this. Always stay calm and never make sudden unexpected moves. Huh? What? What? Whatever you're talking about is extremely dangerous. Quick-tempered, unstable. Can you imagine saying that about a human? Don't make any fast, sudden, unexpected moves, or this man will stab you to death. He, he's going to blow your brains out if you move too fast. If you move too fast... If you wave your hand in front of the dog, it's going to stab you repeatedly. And this is not, you're telling me this does not violate 
the reckless endangerment laws that are on the books? What are we talking about? If possible, it says, let the dog approach you and sniff your hand. So you better stay still. Don't move. Don't budge. Once you sense the dog is comfortable, you can think about petting the dog. So they're saying don't actually pet it. Just if you think the dog is comfortable, now you can think about petting it. Now you can give it some thought. Doesn't it sound like we're dealing with something that's unbelievably dangerous and quick-tempered? Something that is mentally deranged, that does not know how to differentiate movements that are threatening between movements that are not threatening? So how can we argue that these things are appropriate? to be in our society. Crazy. Okay, Ashley's in the building. I don't know what's going on. Ashley, we, we need we need some more of uh of those videos. I hope everything uh gets back to normal. I don't know. I heard something like your server or something was going on. Ban all I think ban all dogs makes videos as well. How many content? If you create content, go ahead and post the link to your channel in the in the chat room. Right? It is my pleasure. I can't take it no more. We got to get we got to get the word out. Y'all believe this? I think we went over this before. We went over this before. But we go over so much stuff that's crazy, it's hard to remember it all. Look at this. Look at this. How quickly you move to petting will depend on how well you know the dog and its, di and its disposition. What in the world? Why? Forget about petting the dog. Why would I want to be anywhere near something like this? Where I have to sit still, not make any sudden movements, slowly extend my hand, but I have to make it a fist so my fingers, I guess if the dog sees fingers, it's more likely to try to chomp them. Why would I want to be anywhere near something like this, whatever you describe it? Nobody, nobody. Anybody can Google those uh, reckless endangerment laws. I went over them several times. D dogs surpass. They go far and beyond endangerment. You have to be out of your mind to allow these things in society, especially inside your home. Look, as noted above, you should never try to pet a strange dog. However, if the owner is present, then you may let the dog approach you. Listen to that. Let the dog approach you. Which tells you what? We know that dogs are going to violate your personal space. They're going to approach you. Because they're uncivilized like that. Again, no other animal violates your personal space like dogs. No other animal is nearly as aggressive as, it's not even close. They are aggressive, quick-tempered. Quick they are said to have evolved next to humans for thousands of years, yet they still misinterpret non-threatening movements and gestures. They still attack you for anything that you do. So, why call these things domestic at all? They're not domestic. They're not domesticated. What is that supposed to mean? I, I thought it means that these are safe animals. If it's domesticated, that's supposed to mean, well, it's used to humans. It's been with humans, grown up with humans, generation after generation. No matter how long dogs 
grow up with humans, they are still far more hostile towards humans than any other animal, including animals that don't grow up. The animals that don't grow up in our home don't bother us. They run away. How many of y'all remember? How many of y'all remember when I shared this article? It's a classic article. Classic article. Google this article. Why don't mountain lions attack more people? They had to conduct a study. They called it a mystery. In 29 experience with 17 lions from December 2015 to June 2016, the lions ran away in 83% of cases as soon as they heard human voices. But they only ran away once when they heard the sound of frogs. So it's the human voices specifically that mountain lions ran away from. Dogs don't do that. They're going to seek you out. How many of y'all remember that classic video? There was an update to this video that just surfaced recently. I'm going to share it also. Let's look at the real nature of dogs real quick. Just a, a, a brief reminder. Okay. This is, this is a classic footage right here. I'm about to share. Okay? And it really illustrates the typical scenario when dogs attack children. There is no pulling on tails or ears. There is none of that. This is how it almost always goes down. The kids are what? Playing. Multiple times in the past week, we've, we've read stories of kids playing and being attacked. And what do you see here? The dog notices the child, right? Y'all see this? The dog spots the child. And what does it want to do? It wants to attack the child. It notices that the child is alone. There's no adult around. It sneaks from behind. Huh? It notices the child has his back to the dog. I mean, this is the least amount of provocation possible. This child didn't even know the dog was there. And that's exactly why the dog wanted to attack. And you mean to tell me, and look at this, and you mean to tell me on a prominent website, a prominent hospital, the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh has that narrative on their website. There was so much that took place in this film. It, this is classic footage, man. All the all the uh, footage that we've looked at on this channel, it goes down just like this. The kids are usually minding their own business, not doing anything. See, these are bloodthirsty predators that get off on attacking, killing, mutilating. See, this is the problem. People don't want to pay attention to dogs' true nature. They want to instead force 
the Scooby-Doo image onto dogs. Like that new movie that just came out, that stupid big red dog. They constantly come out with more and more movies in order to combat stories like that. Got to keep the brainwashery going. So let's go back to this website. It says, okay, that was crazy. How quickly you move to petting it will depend on how well you know the dog and its disposition. So if you don't know it that well, you thought about petting it. If you want to pet it, you better move slowly. Move slowly. Or else you're going to get stabbed to death. Huh? And they and they want to put out images like this and project dogs as a match made in heaven for your babies, your toddlers, your kids. Even though we sitting here with the statistics in our hands showing us that dogs usually attack kids. And they bombard us, especially with the doo-doo. I think somebody said it's actually pronounced the dodo, but let's call it the doo-doo. Pun intended. Isn't this sinister? This is this is demonic. Okay, they're not done. Uh, the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh is not done. Say, so as noted above, you should never try to pet a strange strange dog. However, if the owner is present, then you may let the dog approach you. Let the dog sniff and touch you before slowly extending your hand. Dude, if you have to go through all of this just to touch the thing, to pet the thing, why the hell, why do you want to pet it at all? These people act like a million dollars going to fall out the sky if they rub a dog. It's not going to do you any good. The only thing you do is put your stupid self in danger. That's all you do. You don't benefit not one iota. How much? It does not take that much brain cells. To understand this. Why are you having such a hard time? If the owner is present, you may let the dog approach you. Let the dog sniff and touch you before slowly extending your hand. If the dog jumps, if the dog growls or bares its teeth, remain calm and still, firmly saying the word no. Y'all hear this? This is the advice given to children. You'll be hard pressed to find a human being with the composure to do this, to pull this off. A dog jumps or growls or bares its teeth. You remain calm and still. You don't budge and you say the word no. What the word no gonna do? Dog don't know, don't speak English. Don't use language at all. What are you talking about? This is sad. Man, this is sad. This is a prominent hospital. What'd they say? Um, yeah, one of the best pediatric hospitals in the country. And they've been ranked one as one of the best multiple times. Ranked number nine. Right? Number nine. In the, and this is out of hundreds of hospitals. Y'all not ashamed of having misinformation like this on your website? Man, this is an important part of, of what I do here on this channel, man. Is, is draw attention to some of the narratives and rhetoric that these professionals are putting out here from the veterinarians, the 
dog behaviors, children's hospitals, the doctors. Unbelievable. Okay, they're not done. Look what they say. Do not scream or run, or run away. Do y'all know what they're doing, why they're saying all this stuff? They are saying that this is what kids do to get them attacked. They move too fast. They make sudden, unexpected moves. You see? When they reach to pet the dog, they move too fast. They screamed. They ran. Do not scream or run away, it says, as this may actually encourage the dog to attack. So if you, I mean, what what other animal does that? If you scream, most animals, wild animals, as soon as they see you, they run away. They don't want no parts of you. Unbelievable. As this may encourage a dog to attack, and there is little likelihood that you can outrun a dog, one expert suggests teaching young children. See, I told you people, this whole time, they have been talking about children. One expert suggests teaching young children that if a dog becomes aggressive, the child should play hide and seek and cover their face with their hands. <laughs> oh my goodness. I gotta take a break. Isn't that crazy? It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. No matter how prominent the organization or whatever, if it's pro-dog, they're going to make some bizarre, outlandish statements. That's one thing you can count on. They're going to say some absolutely ridiculous things through and through. And like I said, the laws we have on the books are sufficient. They are sufficient enough. To ban dogs. And that's exactly what should happen. These things need to be banned. You know what they're doing. These people, they, they live in this fantasy land. They look at pictures and stupid stuff like this. And this colors their whole perception. Now, listen, this is the equivalent of looking at photos like this. How long do you have to look at a photo like this, dog nuts, before you actually want to lay your child next to a flipping lion? But I bet you, if if you look at these photos long enough, with your IQ, you dog lovers, you will eventually want to lay your child next to a fully grown African male lion. That's basically what you're doing right now. What you're doing right now is really not much different. It's just as crazy. This is just as crazy as this. The fact that dogs are smaller is irrelevant. They are powerful. That's all that matters. But with the logic that they're operating on, you couldn't allow them to look at photos like this for too long because eventually they would want to actually do this. Oh, that's so sweet.
just the opportunity to snap a photo or record a short video of their child with a tiger is the only thing that they're going to get out of taking this chance. And if anything goes wrong, what's the result? What's the consequence? It's not a scratch. It's not a light bruise. It's you, you're being stabbed to death in multiple areas. There's a lot of blood. You're basically throwing your child in a meat grinder. Oh, I'll take the chance anyways. Because these kinds of photos are so cute. Man, oh man. There, there's no helping. There is no helping dog nuts. There's no helping dog nuts. I know. I know there's no helping them. You know, I'm just, you know, I can't help but try every now and then. You know? Yeah. It's, it's pretty sad. Now, as I pointed out, now hopefully they change this information, people. Because this is bad. That's not a minor mistake. That's a big mistake. For you to mislead people. That's misleading. Okay, let's let's get the math right. Hopefully, hopefully they change that. But as I pointed out uh, in, the, in the community section, I ordered a body cam. I'm telling you now, don't be surprised if I obtain dozens of these small body cameras and give them away. Give them away. I want us, we should all have one of these. This particular one is a necklace. We should all have one of these. If we don't do anything else, we should be able to record dogs off leash, a near attack, or anything like that. You know, turn it on as you walk to your car. Nothing happens. Okay, turn it off. I wish I had one when that dog attacked me. That would have been all I needed. But we need to become a group of surveillance individuals. We, we should operate like a surveillance camera at all times and record every act of insanity that they display. They really are endangering everyone. Yes. Yes. Don't be surprised if I obtain a few of these and, and just give them away. You know, I don't know if you're, you're comfortable. I'll send them to a P.O. box in your city. All you have to do is go pick it. A matter of fact, I'll just send it to your post office and say, hey, such and such, they're going to come up and pick up their body cam. I want us to have this. I wish all of my followers could have this. So if it's something that uh, you can afford, and let me tell you, I'm not playing. I'm dead serious. This, this thing is only 30 bucks, free delivery. I will be giving these things away in the future. I want us to be ready. I want us to be ready to defend the general public, the helpless, people whose own parents not defending them. Unbelievable. So most definitely, it's child endangerment, but it's also a disendangerment period. Even us as adults, 
They're endangering us. But there are no laws on the book to protect us. And who cares if adult is endangered? So that's why I point out the violation of the laws that are present on the books. And one of the laws they break all the time is letting their worthless mutt off leash, letting it run around. They get away with that far too often. The attack that took place a few days ago, you heard the people say that the dog being off leash has been a constant problem in the community. Well, the community should have video footage of it. And you need to put constant pressure on the warden, uh, the police, landlords, and all of that. I'm done talking about these lunatics and this dog nuttery. I'm about to start acting every day of my life. So big shout out to everybody who's able to join uh, me in this brief live stream. Let's hope the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh does the right thing and corrects this misinformation on their website because it is quite misleading. That is a big mistake. 2,400 is a lot different from 13,000. That's a massive difference. 100 dog attacks per hour is a lot different than 586 or whatever it was each hour, which is the actual statistic. Let's hope they fix this blunder. Stay safe out there, people. Stay clean as we continue with this merciless crusade against these worthless mutants and their deranged enabling owners.